Osteopaths assess their patients by taking a thorough case history and then looking at the interconnectedness of all the body's structures. We also assess patients through our sense of touch by palpating tissue states and we often talk about listening to a patient's tissues and how the muscles feel and, and other body structures. We often say that we treat the patient rather than a set of symptoms because although human beings all have a common design, everybody's slightly different. We like to look at the posture and placement of our patients and see how they're weight bearing and we also listen to tissue states by using our sense of touch and we learn a lot about how our patients' bodies are functioning through listening to those tissue states. This young man came in a week ago with a foot problem and it's a very good example of how we approach problems osteopathically. So I'm going to explain uh, a little bit about the symptoms that Harry came in with, uh, how I've analysed it and uh, the sort of treatment that uh, seems to be working very well. Uh, so Harry had had pain in his foot. Uh, he'd had a bit of pain for six months, mostly around the ball joints here and up the side of the leg. But in the ten days uh, prior to coming in for treatment, this pain had got much worse and he developed a tremendous sense of swelling and bruising on the ball joints of the, of the foot. Um, and the pain up the side of the leg had, had worsened. The generalised pain that Harry had been feeling for about six months that hadn't really bothered him um, had, had also worsened in that the increased pain down the side of the leg also started to be linked to pain travelling up the back of the thigh right up to the buttock and the back of the pelvis and he complained that he was now finding it very difficult to walk and uh, a key factor in understanding this problem for Harry was that uh, he mentioned carrying his children. He's got uh, one young baby uh, of five months and a two-year-old, uh, two-year-old, and he carries both of them in the shopping, does a lot of walking. So whereas this chronic low-grade problem he'd had in the foot uh, had been something he could live with, the uh, pattern of carrying a lot of weight with the kids in the shopping had had this huge impact on the foot. When I examined Harry, I found he had a very nice posture. He was uh, very central in his weight bearing. So there wasn't really a problem there. But uh, when I looked at his feet, it was very obvious that he had a dropped arch, on, particularly on the right foot, the symptomatic foot. Both feet were characterised by quite high arches dropped arches uh, across the uh, ball joints of the feet and this dropping of the arch was much more exaggerated on the right foot. The foot is a, quite a complex arch structure whereby the bones, fit, the many bones that fit together and create a series of arches longitudinally down the inside of the foot and on the outside, on the, on the uh, lateral side of the foot, and then there are arches going transversely across here. And it's a, a marvellous design to pass weight-bearing forces of the whole body through the foot. When the arches become compromised by uh, being a little flattened, uh, too much impact can hit certain areas of the foot, and this is what's happened to Harry, so that as the, the uh, distal arch has dropped here, the ball joints have been taking too much weight, too much body weight, and there's a, a, a much greater fullness of the foot on this surface compared to the other side. So this is an indicator that this arch is much more dropped than the other foot, and that explains why Harry's had more pain through the right foot than the left foot. Understanding the uh, machinery of the body, um, it, it's a very analytical process. Now, when the arch has dropped, and we're trying to understand why, why Harry's had this pain, why he's had that pain up the side of the leg, the uh, significant thing here is that there are some very important muscles running down the side of the leg that come under the foot and hook on a very, very strong bone here. And when any part of that uh, arch isn't working well, other parts of the arch structure will also be compromised. And this is why Harry's had the pain up the side of the leg. Uh, as 
the the arch uh, mechanism throughout the foot is under excessive load and it's compromised. This is putting load on the muscles that work down the sides of the leg. So in treating Harry's foot and leg problem that's now passed up the, the leg to the lower back and the pelvis, we've got to start by improving the arch mechanics. So the problem with Harry's foot, which uh, has manifested with a problem in the ball joints, has put extra load on the muscles at the side of the leg, which are intrinsic in supporting the arch. These muscles have got very, very tight. Uh, and they also have felt very stringy. Osteopaths gain a lot of information from our palpitary touch. The muscles were very stringy, very knotty. And with these muscles being on, under load, it's also affected the um, muscle functioning all the way up the back of the thigh, into the buttock and the lower back. So uh, how do we treat this osteopathically? There are uh, three parts really to getting Harry feeling a lot better. We looked at his footwear and he had been wearing shoes that had very, very thin soles with no uh, good uh, footbed. So I've given Harry lots of advice about the kind of footwear he should be wearing that will give him lots of additional shock absorbency on the sole of the foot. And we've also looked at uh, supplying him with a really good over-the-counter orthotic, which is an insert you put in a shoe, three-quarter length, and that re-establishes the arch so that weight-bearing forces coming through the lower limb will be distributed beautifully through the foot. So that offloads this tremendous pressure that's been hitting the ball joint. So um, with the orthotic in the shoe, and Harry now... Uh, being better informed about choices when he buys footwear. His feet are going to be resting in a really good position and his arches are going to be functioning better. But we still have to improve osteopathically how his body is functioning to get out of this long-term strain pattern. So treatment uh, will be aimed at loosening up all the articulations and muscles in the feet because while the arch has been compromised there will be a lot of uh, tightness in the muscles and some of the joints won't be working well so um, I've started to do a lot of work to mobilize the foot uh, so treatment uh, will, uh, will involve a lot of soft tissue work to the lower limb principally to the side of the leg where the muscles that help to support the arch have been working over time because the arch hasn't been doing its job uh, but I shall also be treating uh, all of the lower limb all the uh, the muscles in the back of the thigh, the pelvis and the lumbar spine to make sure that all of those muscles are working well, that they're not tight and knotty and to make sure that all the articulations, all the joints in the lumbar spine and pelvis are also working well and uh, we can get a better balance uh, for Harry in the lower limb and his foot. So Harry's problem that came in essentially as a foot problem has been traced back uh, through all the components that have been affected. Uh, but the starting point to help any patient is to understand where, where the problem arises from, what's the central problem. And um, for Harry, it was really a foot problem that had caused other symptoms elsewhere in the body. Uh, and that's one of the strengths of osteopathy, looking at the body's mechanics and understanding where the problem starts and understanding what other problems radiating out elsewhere uh, as a result of that central problem and we seem to be on the right path now with uh, with Harry's foot and I'm sure that he's going to feel a lot better over the next few weeks when he's had a few more treatments.